Hello, and welcome to part three of our series of lectures on the digestive system. And in part three, we're going to take a look at the uh, anatomy and physiology of the stomach. Now, if we take a look at the stomach, what we're going to have is essentially a, a sac-like organ, which is involved with temporarily holding the food that has been ingested. Um, so because of that, because it's a tem temporary structure involved with holding the food, uh, in its relaxed state, we're going to see a lot of temporary folds of mucosa and submucosa. And these temporary folds can be referred to as the rugae. Um, now, as the stomach becomes filled during, you know, during a meal, we can see the stomach start to expand and those temporary folds are going to be flattened out. Now, if we take a look at what's going on within the stomach, we're going to be adding a lot of mucus to these materials. Uh, as well as acids and pepsin. Now, pepsin is going to be an example of a digestive enzyme. So we're going to be continuing this process of uh, chemical digestion of these food particles. Okay, the stomach itself is going to be lined by a simple columnar epithelium. So again, simple one cell layer thick columnar, the cells are taller than they are wide. And so if we take a look at this, the surface cells are going to be mucus secreting. So these cells at the arrow on this diagram are going to be secreting a neutral mucus. And again, this is going to be important because the mucus is going to be lubricating the surface of the epithelial lining. And it's going to have a neutral um, kind of a acidity, or a neutral uh, characteristic, because we're going to be dumping a lot of acids into the lumen of the stomach. And so the acid is going to be great for breaking down those food particles but we don't want those acids to start to erode away at the epithelial lining of the stomach. And so that neutral mucus is going to be coating the, the epithelial lining, and it's going to be neutralizing the acidity of the contents within the stomach. Now, we're going to see that the stomach is going to have this surface mucosal cells, the simple epithelium, but then we're going to have invaginations where we're going to have gland-like structures they're going to extend down into the mucosa. So essentially epithelial lining that is going to extend down into glands. And within these glands, we're going to have parietal cells, also referred to as axonetic cells, and chief cells. Chief cells are also referred to as zymogenic cells. These are going to be the primary cells that we can identify within the stomach glands. Uh, we're also going to have a few enteroendocrine cells, which we'll talk about in a little bit of detail. Uh, but the enteroendocrine cells, that since you're able to respond to what's going on within the stomach, will release hormones to signal either other regions of the stomach or other regions of the digestive system to essentially promote the digestion of those materials. Now, the first of the cells we're going to look at are going to be the parietal cells, the axentic cells. Again, these are found within the, the stomach glands, referred to as cardiac glands, very prominently within the fundus or the fundic region, the body region of the stomach. Now, if we take a look at the parietal cells, what we're going to see is relatively large, sale, relatively large cells. They're going to have a pale, uh, either roundish or uh, pale acidophilic, I'm sorry, acidophilic, uh, kind of reddish uh, staining appearance to the cytoplasm. The nuclei are going to be centrally located and normally having a relatively round appearance. These cells, if you take a look at them, uh, are going to have the ability to secrete lots of hydrochloric acid and intrinsic factor. And so these are the cells that are going to be involved with the production of acids within the stomach. The second type of cells are going to be the chief cells, the zymogenic cells. And these cells tend to be found deeper within those gastric glands. And so you're going to have the, the reddish or the pinkish accentic uh, cells, uh, parietal cells towards the top. You're going to have a more basophilic cell, these bluer staining cells, down towards the base of the glands, deeper within the glands themselves. Now, the chief cells, the zymogenic cells, are going to have the typical morphology of a cell involved with synthesizing and secreting peptides, uh, essentially synthesizing and secreting proteins. And they're going to be involved uh, with production of pepsinogen as well as a small amount of lipase. And so these are going to be smaller cells. They're going to have that basal basophilia that we've talked about before. So the nuclei is going to be pushed kind of rounder towards the base of the cell. Lots of rough endoplasmic reticulum in the middle portion of the cell. And then towards the apex of the cell, we're going to have lots of secretory granules, 
where we're going to find these digestive enzymes. So if we take a look at the appearance of the glands, again, keep in mind that we're going to have this epithelial lining towards the top. We're going to have mucus secreting cells. They're going to be up against the, the contents of the lumen, but then extending down from that epithelia are going to be like invaginations or like we're, we're taking that epithelial line and we're pushing down with our, our fingers. And we're going to have this continuous network of glands which remain in contact with the epithelial lining. So if we trace all the way down, even down to the cells at the bottom of the gland, they're going to release their secretory product and it's going to be moved up through the gland and then dumped into the lumen. But it's going to be the presence of these glands which are going to give the in inside of the stomach, the lumen of the stomach, the epithelial lining of the stomach, kind of a cobblestone appearance because we're going to have gastric pits, which are kind of the opening region, um, and then extending down deeper into the mucosa, we're going to have the gastric glands. And then, again, depending upon the region of the stomach, we're going to have different gland structures associated with it. And so the cardiac region of the, the stomach is the start of it. The fundus or the, the body of the stomach is going to be the major region of it. And then the pyloric region is going to be the region where the stomach is going to open into the small intestine. So we're going to have cardiac glands, fundic glands, and pyloric glands based upon where we are within uh, the wall of the stomach. Now, if we take a look at the cardiac glands, again, what we're going to see is the surface cells still have uh, the mucus uh, secreting uh, phenotype. They're going to be simple columnar cells producing lots and lots of mucus to pr protect our epithelial lining. We take a look at it, we're going to have relatively short pits and relatively short glands. And so we're going to have a relatively short mucosa uh, when we take a look at it. Primarily mucus secreting cells. And so they're going to be adding lots of lubrication, uh, lots of protective uh, properties, uh, lubricate it, neutralize uh, the acidity uh, on the epithelium, uh, also mixing with these content material. So lots of mucus cells and a few parietal cells, but again, primarily mucus cells, even extending down into these short cardiac glands. Within the fundus of the stomach, we have the fundic glands. These are going to have relatively shallow pits. So again, uh, the pits uh, on one on the diagram that's labeled uh, to the right, mucus secreting cells, and then relatively long glands uh, extending in that region mark two. Uh, so again, these glands remain continuous with the epithelial lining in the stomach, but if we take down, take a look at it, it's going to give a tricolored appearance to our mucosa. So we're going to have a pale staining appearance towards the top, where we're going to have the mucus secreting cells within the pits. Within the neck region of the gland, kind of the opening uh, of the glands where it opens up into the pits, we're going to have kind of a reddish or pinkish staining appearance because we're going to have predominantly these parietal cells. And then deeper into the gland, we're going to have the base of the gland, and we're going to have the chief cells. And so we're going to have a more basophilic staining appearance within these regions. Within the pyloric region of the gland, uh, again, the pylorus, where we're going to be opening up into uh, the small intestine, we're going to have very deep pits and relatively short glands. And in this case, again, we're going to have primarily mucus secreting cells. So uh, uh, throughout this region, the relatively pale staining appearance in hemotoxin eosin stained specimens of these uh, mucus secreting cells. Rarely you'll find parietal cells and chief cells within this area. And this is going to finish up our discussion of the stomach. Uh, come back uh, for part four of this lecture series and we'll take a look at uh, the intestines. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to email me at hoffmanj at arcadia.edu. Thanks.